Now let's take a tertiary alkyl halide and do a substitution reaction with, a, with water. So a tertiary alkyl halide. So let's give ourselves a tertiary alkyl halide. And so we need to, let's put on chlorine this time. So that is definitely a tertiary alkyl halide. And it says we're going to treat it with some water. And that's going to give us, let's say here, a tertiary alcohol, like so. So how does this occur? Okay. So the first thing that happens is a heterolysis step. Okay. So we have a heterolysis step in which our leaving group, which is the alkyl halide, leaves. And when that leaves, we generate a carbocation. And this is really important because this is a tertiary carbocation, which is relatively stable. And then we have the leaving group that is just left as well, right there. But we are, we are in aqueous media here. So we have a lot of water present. And so that water molecule looks like this. We can see that the oxygen atom has two lone pairs, so that's electron rich. We have a carbocation, that's going to be electron poor. And so we are going to now take this electron rich species, attack the electron poor species by a coordination step. Just like so. And when that attacks in that coordination step, we're going to get something that looks like this. You see that the lone pair here is forming the bond using that, that covalent bond now is formed from that lone pair. And that oxygen atom is still attached to both of those hydrogens. And so now we have an oxygen atom with three bonds and one lone pair. So that's going to give us a, a formal charge of plus one. <clears throat> and what do we have left over here? And so we have, we still have excess amount of water present because that's the solvent as well. And so what we can do next is a proton transfer step. PT for proton transfer, we can take and use water right here, electron rich oxygen, electron poor uh, hydrogen, we can do a proton transfer and burn that and put the electrons there to form our product right there. And so when you take a look at all of these three mechanistic steps, the whole thing could just be summed up as a SN1 mechanism. Because an SN1 mechanism is composed of these three steps.